I'm Brent Budsberg and this is Shannon McCaw. We do a lot of different types of work. Um, we kind of think of ourselves primarily as sculptors, but our work branches out from there in many different directions. We do a lot of work based on history and ancestry and sort of delving into different ways that people perceive the past. They're kind of explorations of the character that I've been developing a little bit, who is loosely based on my ancestors. Um, I don't know a lot about some of my distant ancestors, and I feel like I'm kind of mining very ancient ancestors for this, um, for this character. It sort of aligns with this concept that we're, you know, cre we're creating a history. It's an imagined history, and so that the concept of an inversion seems to be yeah. kind of a natural parallel. Well, and this room has sort of become this strange room where that doesn't really adhere to the normal <laughs> rules of reality. <laughs> One of the things that tends to be a theme that comes up over and over is this idea that history is this really malleable, or we sometimes call it a plastic medium because we think of it as a sculptural medium almost, that sometimes yeah, in bad uh, ways, you know, the history is manipulated to change stories and make, you know, historical um, facts become um, lost in time. <laughs> kind of intentionally leave these things open-ended and, and I think with most of our work there's something familiar there um, that the viewer can relate to. Um, so I think that in that sense the viewer is generally drawn into it and um, brings something of their own experience to it but then we tend we tend to flip flip it on its head to a degree and leave something for the viewer to puzzle over. Yeah, absolutely. Open-ended narratives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lon Michaels. I am a painter generally. I'm an artist. Uh, I paint objects and um, I've been working for 50 years as an artist painter. So I don't invent any colors, but I do manipulate my colors into a, a, a greater uh, vibrancy. Um, I balance my color and my, my patterns and, because really they're found in nature. We, the human eye only sees really so much and, and everything is just layers and layers of, of patterns and textures and colors one on top of the other. For my work I try to you know, embellish what's already in nature and bring that into my work by adding, adding layers and layers and layers and then pulling them together with a, a particular um, it might be a color, it could be a, a, a black line, it could be in this sense it's going to be the, the, the browns and the blacks of the leopard print that will pull all the colors together. I believe in painting and, and art as a spiritual quest as well. When I lost my eyesight, I couldn't no longer see outside of myself, so I was forced to look within myself. And that really was the inspiration that changed my life and changed me as a person to really want to not waste one second more and just try to um, have this quest to create beauty. I do believe that the more I paint, the more of a domino effect it has on the world in which I live in. And so maybe, just maybe, when I die, I can leave this place a better place than when I came here. And that's really my inspiration. My name is Todd Mersinski and I'm an image maker. I'm really looking and studying trees and seeing the way that they grow and the patterns of growth. And to study that and to kind of become one with that through doing the work, I feel that I understand my own cycles better. The work is really built in stages. Um, I do a lot of uh, 
subtraction, adding, uh, a lot of erasing uh, the pieces that are in the hotel. One is uh, charcoal uh, with water added, so it kind of turned into an ink. Uh, the other is actually ink. Uh, and in that one, I really used a tool to really rough up the paper a lot so that it really felt like leaves. I hope that they will feel inspired to uh, love nature and look at nature and um, look at uh, the beauty in the mark and uh, how, the, how the work is actually made. Town. I am the owner of Bayview Printing, so I'm a letterpress design and printer. Uh, I'm drawn to printing for a lot of reasons, um, but I think most of all the tactility so and the physicality. So the fact that I can actually hold letter forms in my hands when I'm making something, there's this connection to language and materiality and um, and then there's the production quality of kind of putting ink to paper. So actually setting type, locking it up in a press, inking up by hand, and then like pulling those prints one at a time, one color at a time. I think there's that like, there's a lot of value for me in the, in the sense of like accomplishment. Initially, even in the sketching phase, we're kind of thinking of how do we play with that light? So can we play with like white ink or yeah, white ink on a dark surface or um, using a negative image? So we're kind of like cutting letter forms out of the shade almost to see light shining through there. So I think one of the interesting things about choosing letter forms here is that I like to think about the stories behind them. You know, like where did, how many times has this been printed? Where did this come from? Who's printed it before? Um, and then what is it, you know, how am I going to use it in this particular instance? Anything that can be gleaned from looking at the shades, maybe it's like our connection to language and letter forms and a printing methodology that most people say is dead, that absolutely positive is still thriving. <laughs> So my name is Jason Yee and uh, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Uh, I delve into a lot of different media materials based on the ideas that comes to my head. The materials that I tend to choose are sort of easily accessible materials, things that you buy from stores and hardware stores and even grocery stores. And I, I really like working with materials like that because I think it, it just kind of demystifies what art can be or could be. What's most important for me as an artist is for the visual, the form, to be the sort of the initial draw. I want there to be a, a recognition of um, some of the sort of the sensibilities of texture, uh, what the mysteries of what material could be, uh, maybe even looking at the, the scale and perhaps seeing scale that defies what that visual scale may represent. years ago I my, my mom passed away and uh, I started to kind of think about uh, her history her personal history and she grew up in Korea and she would tell me of her stories of uh, 
Korean War and these different sort of uh, tragic events that happened to her throughout her life. And one of the stories that she told me was sort of the bombings that she witnessed as a young girl, a young child. And uh, that really kind of stuck with me. So I started looking at uh, the news and there are lots of lots of stories back a couple years ago of all these missile launches that were happening out of North Korea. And I was torn looking at the missiles and smokes because in one sense as a visual artist I was aesthetically drawn to the smoke, the certain visual beauty of the smoke and what it can do as a phenomenon. Uh, the idea of dissipation into thin air, it, it appearing in one, one, one sense and disappearing in the few minutes later. And I really enjoy that part of it, but at the same time, looking at the missiles, it just reminded me of my parents' sort of experience growing up in Korea. So I really enjoyed or really kind of wanted to investigate that sort of conflicting uh, ideas of what that missile could represent for me and the aftermath of that missile being the sort of the devastation, the toll it takes on human beings, but at the same time, the beauty, the visual beauty of the plumes. My name is Benjamin Fairley and uh, I am a visual artist. My inspiration comes from, a lot of it comes from music and my family and, and, and just human interaction, I guess. I'm a people watcher, so I just love watching people interact, and that's why I'm so drawn to faces and people. Oh, I, I hope the viewer walk away and walks away with a smile, and, and, and that's about it. That's, there's really nothing, there's nothing, you know, behind my, my paintings or my artwork. There's no message, it's just, it's just art for art. My work is very, very textural. I want people to want to touch it, because when I was younger, I've always wanted to, to understand the feelings behind it. My work is all experimental, for sure. I just like to, to see what happens, like, like science. It's asking myself, well, what would happen if I did this to this particular object? Like I just come in here and I turn the music on and let go. My name is Linda Lindner and I am a tile maker, ceramic artist. I grew up always making things out of absolutely nothing. And as an adult, the biggest nothingness I found was um, dirt. It's all around us, it's clay, it's the basic material of earth. And there's something so forgiving about it. If you mess it up, if you make a mistake, you just smooth it out again and start over. Or you squish it up and grind it back up and it's still dirt and you start again. And that's what I love about clay and ceramics. I look at creativity as this energy force field above my head and it's floating there and it's a river. And anyone can tap into it, but when I tap into it, you can't not create, you can't not move. It pulls you along. And so the dancers that I made for the St. Kate, there's a hand reaching up and that hand connects to a grout joint and it's kind of like the grout 
flows through, the energy flows through, a dance happens and then leaves through her foot. Here's tile, tile, tile. Oh, a dance happens, tile, tile, tile. And that can happen to anyone. It is, again, a life energy for the art community. It is saying, hey, artists in Milwaukee, we appreciate you, we love what you do. We can show the world that there are fabulous artists here and we support you. Rosemary Allison. I'm a self-taught artist, so I guess the work I do would be a gift. My whole life, my frame of reference is the Bible. When I'm creating, I'm, it's like I'm in another dimension. It's like I'm free. I don't have to think. It's not like if these two pieces go together or whether this color go together, it's beyond that. It's like I feel at peace. I think I had to experience all of the bad things. I endured all of that and God taken me through that. And at one point, it was like everything just came to light and it's beyond words, the joy that I feel. The, all of my art is just really an extension of who I am. And so I wanted the room to be who I am. I hope that really they walk away with the sense that something is possible. Realize that we all do have gifts, but it's up to us to find those gifts. My name is Kelly Frederick Miser, and I consider myself more than anything a storyteller. The process of creating is, is trusting yourself to make something, and then trusting that the painting is going to play back, and then it's going to have a conversation with you back. And it's all about that kind of push-pull relationship. For me, the idea of trying to maintain who I was as an artist and as a writer and as a person and then try to enjoy being a mom was really, really caught me off guard and I felt horrible for saying that at the time, that I was unhappy doing that. And so a lot of, a lot of the work early on was about home and not necessarily a positive way, but in about kind of trying to find my place in that. I did the shower curtain and the tissue box and the hair dryer bag. Behind that is a couple of things. Um, I thought about the hotel being an arts hotel for all kinds of artists, for dancers and writers. And so I thought about images that bind, that connect those things. And it also reminded me of my daughter who, when I was creating that, was headed off to her first year of college and how she would leave a trail of bobby pins, you know, all over the house. And so hair pins and hair ties and bobby pins show up in my work a lot about that idea of connection. And I thought about, you know, travelers and staying connected to home. Uh, I did a lot of work about getting ready and feeling ready. And one of the things I've told myself at the very beginning of this kind of new, newer chapter in my life, now that the kids are kind of all gone, is that I'm ready. I've heard a lot of people in my life say things like, I want, I want, I want, I want. And that's great, but I think that then the universe keeps you wanting. And so I've really in the last few years changed that to now I'm ready. So those grooming things, whether they're hairpins or brushes or combs, are really all about that. That's what we use to identify who we are. I hope that when people see my work, they feel valued and welcome and familiar, that there's something that really feels like home. I'm Nikki Johnson, and I make art out of just about anything. I look at 
making art as kind of a journey in better understanding the world around me. I pitched the idea of something that was more conceptual, something that was more based in pop, that felt more like a playful way of getting guests to engage with the notion of what art can be. And pink erasers are just kind of goofy and glorious and so very everyday. I mean, they're mundane, completely banal, and also something you totally wouldn't expect to see next to your sink. So I thought that that might provide an aha moment. You know, as soon as they come in the room, uh, take a look around, enjoy the pieces on the walls, the tapestries, all the details, that that would be the moment where they're unwinding. They're gonna go wash their hands and kind of ground in their new space. And yet, here's another surprise. My name is Paul Druka, and I would describe my art making as using a variety of different mediums specific to the idea that I'm thinking about. I am always a fan of, of things that kind of lean towards the poetic, you know, things that are not obvious, that aren't telling a specific kind of history, but at the same time they are giving information that I feel is valuable. One thing I'm super excited about for this project is it's an opportunity to bring my work with actual, you know, prefabricated welcome mats, uh, but to then think about it in this custom printed, larger than life welcome mat um, that very much is about collaging a number of different layers together because I find that to be a, like a metaphor for what the, again, what the urban environment is and how people understand their relationship to th that environment, but also each other. The piece for uh, St. Kate was an opportunity to think about the importance of the poetic community. Um, and, you know, the, the fact that this hotel is in honor of the arts and celebrating the arts, you know, to give them a place. There is a little bit of self-aware humor with the idea that their place will be on something that people are walking over. It's a functional carpet. They'll be walking over it and they'll have to negotiate their relationship to this idea. Is, is this honorific? Is it odd to be walking across these poets' names? And I like that, you know, that may not be easily resolved or a, a point of tension and a point of interest. I like the idea that the welcome mat is such a vernacular material that most of the time you could encounter to never ever think about. If you have one at your house or you're stopping at somebody's house and you walk across that message, it, that doesn't even register. That awareness is not usually there when it's this vernacular material is in its normal environment. It's an honor to be asked. It is especially an honor to be given the opportunity to, I, to create a piece of work that's bringing some of what I've been working on and what I've been thinking about, but into that specific environment and context and a place that's going to see a lot of people, a lot of traffic coming through. My name is Reed Skos and I'm a fine artist. I work basically with painting and some collage elements. I work with a lot of found imagery and also created imagery through sketching or painting just on its own. How I make the work is it comes out of like a signal. So these signals are, they could be anything. They could be shapes that I see on the ground. They could be a color of a patch of gum on the sidewalk. And then taking those pieces out of their world context and putting it into art and then trying to figure out what that's saying, you know, for me. 
In a sense, like it's a framework built out of you know, my own experiences, but also being a piece that other people can use. It's maybe a part of like a, a larger cycle of moments that move around and kind of affect people. Something different happens when someone is in your space, in your mind space, and there's just a, a higher chance that they're going to contemplate the ideas more than looking at just a painting on a wall. I think to really live in the environment is to like search and to discover, and I think there's something about being so present that pushes us into this in-between place where we can really do anything. Um, it's, really, it's really exciting to be a maker. The St. Kate is such a strange conglomeration of artists of all disciplines and they're, it's an awesome opportunity. It's, it's really great to just be in a place that celebrates artists, that celebrates what, what we're doing, you know, that says, hey, you as a maker, you're important, and what you're doing is important, and what you're saying is important. It's a place to expand our ideas on what it means to be a maker and what it means to be um, a person. My name is John Grant, and I'm a commercial photographer in Milwaukee. I do a lot of work for visible companies here in town, and I also produce artworks. What inspires me is the obvious, and I like to add a little bit of humor to things that are obvious in today's world. <laughs> humor of living, uh, that, that's what I like to think about when I'm producing art. I'm calling my room the perfect room, and I've spelled it a little bit differently. I've spelled it uh, P-E-R-F-I-C-T because nothing's perfect. It initially started out as a concept uh, called the pink elephant room. I, I, I conceptualized the pink elephant room as having artworks that that showed the things that people don't like to talk about that are there. Perfect came from that because I designed a couple of pieces that uh, are the really the inspiration for the perfect room came from a lot of my commercial clients and their desire to make their photos or to make their headshots or to make their profile pictures perfect. And by doing so, you take away all of the uniqueness. To me, you take away a lot of the uniqueness of a person by making them perfect. One of the first things that we did is numbered the floor numbers with American Sign Language that we enlisted some of the workers at the St. Kate um, to be our hand models for our floor numbering. So at the end of each of our hallways, you'll see an American Sign Language greeting to the floor done by one of the workers with all of their uh, spackling and paint and gritty, grimy hands. It's really pretty startling in itself. And then each floor of the, of the hotel has a landing that has um, an art form represented. We have a floor for painting, we have a floor for photography, we have a floor for design and such. And with each of those artworks, my partner in crime and I decided what we would do is represent the form of art, but to strip out a lot of the common perceptions of that art form and get down to what is the essence of a painting, what is the essence of uh, typesetting, what is the essence of photography. My name is Christiana Grauert and I am an illustrator and paper engineer and artist. I'm very inspired by traveling. I stopped taking photographs quite a while ago because I noticed that 
I take pictures and I never bother to look at them again. And so for maybe five, six, seven years, I really force myself when I go somewhere to only work with a sketchbook and really be present in any moment and sort of stand there and just draw what I see and sort of absorb whatever is there and translate it immediately into sort of my handwriting, filter it through my eyes and my hand onto the page. And there is a way of really creating memories that stay with you because I'm very present at that moment and I remember the sounds, I remember the smell, I remember the temperature at that moment and then I later go into the sketchbooks, I go back unlike the photographs that I never look at. I didn't even know what a bat scarf was so now I have a word for it and uh, seeing something that's a big platform, it's a big piece of illustration to have it cover the entire bed and being present in every single room in a hotel is amazing. The faces originated, yes, from different drawings from sketchbooks and trying to reflect a little bit the diversity of people that travel to a hotel from all places. I mean, young people, old people, men, women, different religions, different hairdos, everything. I felt very honored to be asked to be part of the um, St. Kate's, uh, especially as I'm not a textile artist and coming to it as an illustrator and be asked to create something that's actually reproduced and fabric was a great challenge and also forced me to think differently. I'm Michelle Grabner, and I like to think of myself as a painter, but a painter who also works in sculptural form, 3D, and somebody who also thinks through ideas. The orange tondo is a gingham pattern, and the gingham pattern is something that I uh, investigate and think about as something that is vernacular, that's found in the everyday, but also an abstraction thinking about grid, thinking about repetition, um, thinking about color. Um, and in the Tondo that is at St. Kate's, it also is important that it has this physicality to it. So uh, it is painted on burlap and the oil painting has a kind of a very viscous quality. So though it is a representation of a pattern, it is also on a, a, a profound weave that you can see as well. So textiles is an underpinning, but textiles that can also speak to the history of modernism and abstraction. It's the backdrops of our daily existence. What lines the activities of going to work, going to school, making dinner, those things in the backdrop are a kind of abstraction, a visual vocabulary that once they're pulled out of their context, out of the everyday, they speak to abstractions. And those abstractions are important to us as humans. Um, thinking about the idea of repetition, of counting, thinking of the idea of the whole um, when it comes to the tondo, the idea of the circle, the singularity of the circle. So kind of going back and forth to the kind of granular experiences of everyday life, but also we as humans take on. I think about them all the time as a kind of monument to a certain degree. Um, uh, what are we doing? How are we fixing it? Um, you know, again, these things that I think often get neglected. And uh, you know, if we just look at them, take time to see them differently, um, it just enriches our those things in our life. Um, you know, hopefully, ideally, the goal is to get others to walk through the everyday and to give pause at a pattern or that overlooked something in a daily experience and to think about it um, more in depth and to give it more value. My name is Caroline Lathan Stiefel and I make sculptural textiles. In my work, I'm inspired by, first of all, my materials. I work with a lot of different textile materials, including fabric, parts of clothing, found plastic, including plastic from my daily life. Whenever I start making a new piece, I never know quite what will happen and 
That is why I think I'm an artist, because I love the element of surprise, that I will work on something and not know what will happen until the very end. My piece, Nimbus, is saying that monumental large-scale art can be made with very lightweight, commonplace materials. And when I first started working with these materials, I was very interested in making large labor-intensive work, but instead of having the work made with heavy, more traditional materials, I wanted to make work that was made with materials that had a personal relation to myself and people around me. I think of my work as abstract, but it also relates to biology and architecture. I started making these forms and then as the piece grew, I began to also incorporate other abstract forms that were inspired by landscapes and flags and <laughs> things like that. When viewers see my work, I want them to walk away with a sense of wonder and to feel surprised perhaps. I want them to look at the materials and think, oh, I didn't know that sculpture could be made with such materials. I feel as if this is a great opportunity for visitors to the hotel to see art and think that art could actually be something that they could live with. So the medium that inspired this room that we're in right now is actually music. So uh, the title of the room is called Power of Song, and it's based on how powerful music is in our world. Music ends up being one of the huge components and influencers in my life because it actually was what started the foundation This Time Tomorrow. In 2001, I wrote a song called This Time Tomorrow. It was written about my, my really good friend, Dick Ticcioni, who was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. He was given three months to live. Since then, the thing has kind of ballooned, and every single year, we've been re-recording this song. And in the room we're in right now, there's 120 albums on the wall, and all 10 versions of the song are on that wall. Foundation's now raised um, almost one and a half million dollars based on that song, helping people that are fighting all forms of cancer from coast to coast. So everybody that stays in the, the This Time Tomorrow room, proceeds of every single night stay goes to our Random Acts of Kindness program. And what that is is people from across the country that are fighting any kinds of cancer and they're financially struggling, we surprise them in their homes, knock on their doors, and give them a check for $3,000 and a hug and leave. Every dollar that comes into this room is going to be directly into that program, which is another way for us to continue to reach and help more and more people. When I designed this room, I wanted to have people, so when they stayed in this room, that they almost had a warm feeling like they were at home. There's a record player, there's albums you can listen to, there's a keyboard that you can actually play music on, there's a guitar that you can write music on or play. I want it to be just a very comfortable room that you just want to be in and actually be intrigued by looking at all the fun albums on the wall and hopefully just be inspired to write, maybe write music, even if you never have in the past or if you have written hundreds of songs. The room kind of does that for you and sort of like inspires you in multiple different ways. So we're hoping that people will write a song, they'll play a song on the piano or on the guitar, record it with your phone, and we'll post it up on the website so everybody can share the experiences that happen inside the room.